Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. You catch up with us a short way into a session at Shallowbrook Lakes. Now the main lake that we were originally going to fish was quite busy so we've actually decided to come on Snipe Lake which is a bit of a forgotten land really. It's the, the trees have all blown in. Not really many people fish it at all so it's a bit unknown of what's in here and the lake is very very deep as well. We are into a fish now, this is the first one of the session, it's a nice bream, I've just seen it down the edge. And bearing in mind the depth of the lake, we decided to fish the slider. So what we'll do is hopefully quickly land this fish and then I'll show you a bit more about what we're going to be doing in the rest of the session. Putting up a nice bite and he's ours. It's taken a little while, but as I said, I don't particularly think there's many fish in here. It's not your typical commercial, it's crammed full of fish. But that makes it slightly more special. Put right in the side there. Let's have a look at him. Really bronze in colour. Probably because the water here is quite clear, so do go slightly bronzier colour. Well that's a cracking start, we'll slip him in the net and we'll talk to you a bit more about the bait and the rigs we've chosen for today's session. Ok let's have a look at a bit more detail about the rig we're going to be using. First of all we'll start with the simple stuff. My hook choice is a B911 size 14, it's nice and strong but fairly small as well. Like I said we don't really know what's in here so it should be able to handle anything that we're likely to pick it up. That then comes down to 014 hook length, which is Daiwa G-Line. That's roughly about five to seven pounds. So again, somewhere in the middle, not a million percent sure what we're gonna catch. It comes on to a corn quick change bead. Very nice and simple for changing hook length. We need to, we can change the hook size, we can go lighter, we can go heavier. Really, really a must in most of my fish in that. That then comes on to a three quarters of an ounce running lead, which brings us on to the most important thing of the rig, which is a float. Now as I said it's a slider float. There's many different variations of slider floats. The one I'm using today is actually a Polaris float. Basically the principle behind it is it freely runs on your line but under tension the float will actually lock and cock itself against the weight of your lead. So it's nice when you're ever fishing deep waters like this you don't actually have to know the depth because the float will find it for you. To explain that in a bit more information what I'll do is I'll just flick this in the margin and you can see the rig working and see exactly how it's going to be fishing today. Right, okay, the rig's gone in. As you can see, to start with, everything sinks to the bottom. It's then just a case of slowly letting the line out over the bail arm until the float comes right to the surface. Next step is just slowly put that line under tension. The float will slowly sink and you can control how much of the bristle you have at the top of the water just by how much tension you put on the line. That will then sit there until you're ready or until you get the bite. Anyway, that's enough of the talking about the rig. What I'll do is just had that first fish. I'm a bit anxious to get out there again and see if there's any more out there. So we'll just put a couple of maggots on. That's what we had that fish on earlier. And we'll have another chuck out there. Picked a nice marker on the far side, just an overhanging tree, so straight out to that. Hit the clip, as I said now, everything's sunk. Sink your line, bail arm comes off, and the float is now on its way to the surface. I can see it pulling the line forward. It's quite deep where we're fishing, it's about 13 foot maybe. This is why the slide is so good. That's now hit the surface, so we're winding that down. And it's sitting there, spot on, with about a centimetre out of the water. I think it's going to be a bit of a waiting game, so let's see what happens on this cast. Just found another fish, jagging about, I think this one's actually probably a roach. 
here is we've had a couple of these that we haven't shown you but it does go to show even with quite a big float these little fish still quite happily I mean that has absolutely buried the float so it's not just bigger fish method or just for bream or tench you can catch everything on it get back out there again hopefully have something a little bit bigger staying with three dead maggots While we're waiting for the next bite, we'll quickly talk you through the bait we've got today. I've got two different sizes of pellet. First of all, just some dampened down two mil pellet. Anything eats those, but there is a few roach that we've seen topping. So we've got some bigger six mil pellets, just normal coarse pellets. Hopefully they'll just be a little bit harder for the small fish to get in them out. Next, we've got a pint of casters. Now it has been quite sunny today, so we've just got those covered in water to stop them discolouring and floating. That's quite important on hot days to make sure you get your casters covered in water. Next, we've got a few normal live red maggots. Red's my favourite colour in pretty much any situation, to be honest. And then we've also got a tin of corn. Nothing special like this, it's just straight out of the tin into the bait box. Last of all, it's probably something I want to talk to you a little bit more about. It's going to be my chosen hook bait choice for today, is dead maggots. Now, there's many different ways you can actually kill maggots. What I'll do is I'll quickly talk you through the way I do it, just on contrast to the other people sometimes may do. First of all, what you need to do is you fill the pot up with some just normal cold water straight from the tap. Next bit you do need to take a bit of time with. Basically what you're doing is from a boiling hot kettle, just add boiling water to the cold water and the maggots and continuously stir all the way through. What you're doing is, instead of scalding them straight off, with straight from a kettle, they go like a, a really horrible whitey colour, and, nice, and they go really stretched as well. By adding water slowly and stirring all the while, you get the effect if you're killing the maggots, but they still keep the nice red colour. There is a few other ways to do it as well, with putting them in the freezer, but that does take a bit of planning, and again, you have to know what you're doing three or four days in advance. Once you've had enough water in there and the maggots are dead, just have a look, they will stop wriggling. It's just simply a case of draining the water off on through a sieve and they're ready to go. You can keep them in a bag or anything for as long as you want. They should be okay for your next session. Anyway, we're still carrying on here. I tried to keep an eye on my float while I was talking to you there as well. We've had a few little knocks, but at the moment, it is still a bit quiet.